السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين My dear children, how are you all doing today? I hope you all are in the best state of Iman and health. May Allah keep you all protected and grant you all the goodness of both the worlds. Allahumma ameen. I hope that now you must be knowing the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha by heart and you'd be reciting the Surah Fatiha with its understanding during your Salah. When you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, the first ayat, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it helps you understand the introduction and the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While reciting Maliki Yawmiddin, you must know that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the master of the day of judgment. Hence, I have to prepare, we have to prepare for that day and we have to do good deeds. This means We'll have to do things to please Allah and do it according to the Quran and Sunnah. While reciting Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'een You must be knowing that worship is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking help is only to Him. While asking for Surat al-Mustaqeem guidance the straight path and the path to Jannah you must be realizing that this is the biggest blessing in the world similarly while reciting an amta alayhim you must be remembering that we are asking for the path of the prophets the companions of the prophets siddiqeen shuhada and salihin who is siddiqeen yes they are the truthful ones. Shuhada are the martyrs. Salihin are the ones who do good deeds. And we are asking for refuge from the path of Yahud and Nasar, the Jews and the Christians. My dear children, congratulations to you all as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your duas for guidance. The dua which you made while reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and in response to this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the whole Quran for us and told us that this is Surah Al-Mustaqeem, this is the path of guidance and the path of Jannah. Understand this with the meaning and explanation, act upon it, follow it, teach it to others and you'll read Jannah inshaAllah. Yes, children, so after Surah Al-Fatiha, our next surah is Surah Al-Baqarah. Today, inshallah, we learn about the virtues and the importance of the surah. So, children, do you remember that we mentioned about three kinds of people in Surah Al-Fatiha? So, do you remember about them, children? No worries, let's repeat it again. We prayed to be on the path of An'amta alayhim. These were the group of people who were favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were the group of mu'mins. So this is the first group of people. Then we prayed to be saved from the path of غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الدَّالِينَ غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الدَّالِينَ So this group is Yahud and Nasara, that is Jews and the Christians. These are the group who earned Allah's anger and those who went on the wrong path. So the second group of people are Jews and the third are the Christians. So these are the three groups that were mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha and the same group has been talked about in detail in Surah Al-Baqarah. 
So children, do you know what will be the benefit of knowing about these people? Yes. This will benefit us in this way that when we will learn about the first group of people in Surah Al-Baqarah, we will learn about the characteristics and the qualities of the people. This means we will learn about the qualities and the characteristics of Muslims, of Mu'mins. After knowing this, we will not look in others, nor in our family, nor friends. In fact, we will look for these qualities in ourselves first, whether we have these qualities or not. If we do not have these qualities, then we'll have to work on it. We'll have to develop all these traits in ourselves. So children, what do you think? If we want to go to Jannah, we need to have these qualities of the first group of people. That is, we need to have the qualities of a mu'min, right? Yes. Then, after this, we will learn about the bad habits of the second and the third group of people. After which, we will do our introspection, that is, we will do self-analysis, whether or not we have these bad habits in us. We will do a self-check and see if we do the sins or disobey Allah. And in case we do it, then it is a very dangerous sign. This is dangerous because the second and the third group were the group of Jews and the Christians on whom punishments were sent. They disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were sent to Jahannam. Therefore, we have to see ourselves if we do such things like them. And if we do, we have to cry, repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and forgive us. And we have to make an intention that we will never go back to that sin again, inshallah. So dear children, let's learn about the importance, benefits and superiority of Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah is a Madni Surah. You must be thinking, what does Madni means? We will tell you. Surahs are of two kinds, Madni and Makki. Madni Surahs are those that were revealed after the Hijrah. That is, after the migration of Prophet ﷺ to Medina. Children, do you know? The disbelievers of Mecca planned to kill our Prophet ﷺ. And at that time, Prophet ﷺ, with the will and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asked Ali radiallahu anhu to sleep on his bed and left Mecca with Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And he migrated to Medina. On the way, Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu stayed and hid in the cave of Hira for three days. Yes, children. So, Makki surahs are those surahs that we revealed before the Hijrah. So, let's make it clear. Makki surahs are the surahs which were revealed to Prophet ﷺ before Hijrah. And Madani surahs are the one that were revealed to Prophet ﷺ after the Hijrah. So children, Surah Al-Baqarah has 286 ayahs, 286 verses. In Arabic, the word Baqarah means cow. This is the name of the surah because the surah has a story of a cow. Musnad Ahmad, Muslim and an nasai have a hadith which says, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not turn your houses into graveyards verily shaitan flees from the house in which surah al-baqarah is recited children do you know when we recite surah al-baqarah why does the shaitan flee this happens because when surah al-baqarah is recited then the angels come down and when they come down, the shaitan goes away. Dear children, let's look into another hadith which tells us that angel come down when Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. This hadith is from Sahih Al-Bukhari. Usaid ibn Hudair said, He was once reciting Surah Al-Baqarah while his horse was tied next to him. 
the horse started to make some noise and jumped up and down. When Usaid stopped reciting, the horse stopped moving about. When he resumed reading, the horse started moving about again. When he stopped reciting, the horse stopped moving. When he resumed reading, the horse started moving again. Meanwhile, his son Yahya was close to the horse and he feared that the horse might step on him, so he stopped reciting. When he moved his son back, he looked up to the sky and saw cloud radiating with light that looked like lamps. In the morning, he went to Prophet wasallam and told him what had happened and then said, O Messenger of Allah wasallam, my son Yahya was close to the horse and I feared that she might step on him. So I attended to him and raised my head to the sky. I saw a cloud with lights like lamps. So I went, but I couldn't see it. Prophet ﷺ said, Do you know what that was? He said, No. The Prophet ﷺ said, They were the angels. They came close hearing your voice, reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. And if you had kept reading, the people would have been able to see the angels when the morning came. And the angels would not be hidden from their eyes. Subhanallah. The splendor and the pride of Surah Al-Baqarah is such that the angels come down to listen to its recitation. Abu Hurairah anhu narrates that Prophet wasallam said, Everything has a hump and Surah Al-Baqarah is the high peak of Quran. In it there is an ayah which is the greatest in the Quran. And it is Ayatul Kursi. The Sadeet was narrated in At-Tirmidhi. Let's see the importance of Surah Al-Baqarah in another hadith. In Muslim, it is stated, Abu Umama radiallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for its reciters. Recite the two illuminated chapter. Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Ala Imran for on the day of resurrection they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flock of birds pleading for their companions Subhanallah In Sahih Al-Muslim it is stated that recite Surah Al-Baqarah as there is a blessing in it there is a sorrow in leaving it and sorcerers cannot defeat it which means the jinn and the magic does not have any effect on those who recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Yes, dear children, so we hope that after knowing the virtues and the blessings of Surah Al-Baqarah, you will be anxious to learn the meaning and explanation of it. Inshallah, from next week onwards, we will be starting with the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته